Plus three quarters to Lanyard, one further back on the inside is Tom Arong, followed closely then by Regal Shah, Sound Horizon, a length of Targlish Classic victory on the inside, and Fearless Hand brings up the rear. So on the sort of they go to the 600, sudden flash, a length and a half stimulus, one to Lanyard, followed by Tom Arong, then Regal Shah and Sound Horizon Classic victory, Targlish second last and Fearless Hand is last, homeward bound, sudden flash leads the way, stimulus sitting a length second, third posse is Lanyard, followed by Tom Tomarong, classic victory, making ground through on the inside, and then Regal Shah and Sound Horizon has hard ridden at the 250, and Stimulus out after Sudden Flash. Sudden Flash about a half-length Stimulus, forget classic victory, but Sudden Flash on the inside is fighting on like a tiger. Stimulus can't do any better than Sound Horizon and Lanyard Targel is flying, but it's Sudden Flash. Sudden Flash has won from a tighty between Stimulus on the inside and the fast-finishing Targlish, and then Sound Horizon Lanyard Further back, Regal Shah, classic victory. Well, whatever chance she had, she lost it at the start. And Fearless Hand and Tom Arong were the last two home. Five, six and two. Five, six, two. Uh, look like the placings. Here is a photo for the miners. Expect $4 even and $1.05 for Sudden Flash. Six, uh, which is Stimulus, 90 cents. And number two, which is Targlish, about 95 cents. It should be five, six, two, but there is a photo for the minor placings. Openers on the fourth event. You see 3, 1600 and they're off and racing. Bequeath missed the start. So did Shivers on Ice and they're back second last and last. King's Arts are one of the first out from Fast Jive and beat the habit getting through in the setter. Now Shivers on Ice driving through with Darren Gauchy to be about fourth when they settle. Kiaman got up on the fence, two lengths to Bequeath and getting back towards the tail of the field, Persian Cyrus and local knowledge. At the 1300, beat the habit in front, about three quarters of a length to King's Answer, well positioned, a length and a half, Kayam on the inside. Fast jive out three deep and shivers on ice in the centre. A length away, Persian Cyrus, followed by local knowledge and last of all, Bequeath about eight lengths off the lead. They're coming down the hill with about 900 metres left to run and the leader beat the habit about two lengths in front of King's Answer. Kayam and third, the inside with a box seat, followed by Fast Jive. Shiver on ice has got no room at the moment, it's back about fifth. Then Persian Cyrus, local knowledge, and Bequeath just got a slight check there, and it's going through the field second last. They've bunched up at the uh, 650 metre point, beat the habit about a length in front, King's answer in second placing. Fast jive wide, followed by Kiaman. Shivers on Ice was next. Local knowledge around the outside, Bequeath was second last, given a cut with a whip, and Persian Cyrus got up on its inside. Around the turn, about 500 metres to run. King's answer the outside of beat the habit. They straighten a the length to Shivers on Ice. Then Kiaman, followed by Fast Jive, the favourite. Bequeath got cut off again. It's still last of the 250. Shivers and Ice moving up the King's Answer and Beat the Habit fighting back. Here's Persian Cyrus on the outside followed by Kiaman and Bequeath. Persian Cyrus moved up on the outside of Beat the Habit and King's Answer. Persian Cyrus has taken the lead, kicked away from Beat the Habit, then King's Answer and Shivers on Ice. But Persian Cyrus wins at about two lengths. Persian Cyrus first, second Beat the Habit, third maybe Shivers on Ice just in front of King's Answer. They were followed in at the head of the others by Bequeath. Kiyama next in, and then came Fast Jive, and Local Knowledge has run last. Well, Persian Cyrus, some good judge told me it was a pretty good thing beaten at, uh, at uh, Bendigo last outing, but uh, we're always a bit smart and we don't take too much notice of the, the good judges. But uh, the horse was uh, well ridden by uh, Kevin Forrester, who has been riding the horse, and uh, well trained by Peter Simons. It's a great... Uh, uh, boost for Pete, who's only got a few horses in work, but he still knows how to train horses. Uh, Bequeath, what could you say about it? It appeared to have, you know, a little, a couple of slight checks, but then again, maybe the horse is a, a, is a, a trouble getter, not, I'm not going to say a trouble maker, because when he was here before, he didn't appreciate the ground, and we made an excuse for him being unlucky, but he, he only got a couple of little checks in the race. He was distinctly disappointing, Bequeath, and uh, I think that he's got to improve a heck of a lot to win any sort of a race coming up into the spring. Well, I think Persian Cyrus was actually the only horse behind Bequeath coming down the hill at about the 700 metre point. So if Bequeath was good enough, he certainly could have won because Persian Cyrus was behind him. Well, Persian Cyrus probably put eight, eight or ten lengths in from where you're talking about, uh, Danny. They, there's probably eight lengths difference in the end because uh, Persian Cyrus went on to win and I think Bequeath's probably run about third last. Yeah. Well, we picked them up inside the 200 metre point here and... Persian Cyrus has virtually got the race won. He's, he's swept to the front, beat the habit, kept going, and King's answer, I think, just failed to run out the 1600 metre trip. Yes, that's probably right. There's Bequeath, uh, second last in the photo now with a white hat, being ridden hard by Michael Clark. I got Michael Clark right this time, but uh, no, it wasn't to any avail. He's got beaten by a good six lengths anyway there. 
Well, There's Keith Tillier is in the mounting yard desk talking. Second 95 cents. It was a battling sort of an effort, and Shivers as third 60 cents. He was probably a little disappointing. Quinella $30.55, Trifecta $231.85, and the race to race double has returned $44.25. Now, the first leg of the quadrilla is race number four. The Pride of Ingenue came out quite nicely. Dibble's Choice away well with Stella Vista. Pride of Ingenue out wider, Al Rabi. And going fast out wide is Miss Deborah. There's a keen go for the lead. Al Rabi has it narrowly from Dibble's Choice. Pride of Ingenue, Miss Deborah goes up on the outside of Al Rabi. And as they settle down, it's Miss Deborah, the outside, Al Rabi, the inside. Close handy, then Dibble's Choice joined by Pride of Ingenue. About three lengths further back, Lazarette. Four lengths, Brood of Emily, Stella Vista, and three away to Sarai. As they come towards the turn into the straight, they look to be five chances. And Al Rabi is just the leader from Miss Deborah. Moving away, rolling away from the rails and coming at them three deep as Pride of Ingenue. They were followed by Dibble's Choice. Lazarette next from Spirit of Emily. And further back in the field, then Stella Vista followed by Sarai. Pride of Ingenue goes after Al Rabi and Miss Deborah. Miss Deborah's right of the first to go for the whip. Dibble's Choice, the West Coast is coming between them. Dibble's Choice is going to Pride of Ingenue and Al Rabi. It's Pride of Ingenue, just the leader. Dibble's Choice, Al Rabi. She's back. She's back in business, the little filly. Pride of Ingenue, too good, the local champion. Champ. She wins it from Dibble's Choice or Al Rabi. Then Miss Deborah followed by Spirit of Emily. Stella Vista followed further back by Lazarette and towered out Sarai. Very, very popular horse in Adelaide. That one, Pride of Ingenue, one four three past the post. Pride of Ingenue has now won nine of her 11 starts, and that's a, an amazing record. Pride of Ingenue back to her best. She's showing a dollar even and 55. Dibble's Choice second to pay a dollar 35. And Al Rabi third number three to pay about 80 cents. It's one four three past the post in uh, race number three. She'll come down Pride of Ingenue, a dollar even and 55. Four Dibble's Choice, a dollar 30. And three Al Rabi, 80 cents. Quinella, seven dollars even. And the trifecta, 40 dollars and 35 cents. Race four at Rose Hill. It's only two minutes away from a start. Number one record dash in the update, $2.00. Two Astrologers, $3.55. Relentless, $4.95. Past International Handicap, and they're set. Try Peg, who's trained by Vic Thompson. Vic also has Astrologist in the race and Quicken. Bart Cummings uh, represented by a couple in this too. Cross Reference. In fact, uh, he's got Cross Reference and uh, Sir Midas. Pip Sound for 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So they're going to be only a few seconds behind schedule, as they're all ready now. The fourth of the day, the Gold Coast International Handicap. They're racing. Lovely start, Astrologist and a smash hit two of the best to begin going fast to lead now Alpine Flyer. Settling Alpine Flyer, a length on smash hit and relentless, then cross-reference black routine and record dash. One from the planted, a couple Astrologist, then Quicken and Sir Midas and two lengths to Tripeg. Going past the 800, the speedy Alpine Flyer, three lengths smash hit, a neck the outside, relentless. One cross-reference and then record dash on its inside, a length black routine. From the planted held up momentarily and then Astrologist just followed by Sir Midas, Tri Peg, and last is Quicken. At the 500, coming to the corner, Alpine Flyer, two relentless, one smash hit, then record dash and cross reference, wider black routine, and a length further back is from the planet, hanging a shade as they turn the corner. Alpine Flyer straightens up more than a length on relentless, third is record dash, and then comes from the planet, who's getting between horses now, and at the 300 metres, the leader is Alpine Flyer from relentless, from the planet is starting to warm up now, and at the 107. 75 from the planet is out after Alpine Flyer. He's going too well for them from the planet. And Gary Willard surges him to the lead. Relentless will get up for second at Alpine Flyer, but from the planet, too good. Second Relentless and third Alpine Flyer, then Record Dash Astrologist, then Cross Reference, followed by Black Routine and Samidas, then Quicken. Second last was Tripeg and Smash Hit was last. 637 past the post at Rose Hill. The winner number six from the planet. $2.40 and $1.15 is the expected should pay. Three relentless. $2.25 and seven Alpine Flyer $1.15. Very disappointing favourite number one record dash. 637 at Rose Hill. We go back to the mounting yard and it's absolutely pouring. Well, they're the runners in the mounting yard for race four, which means we are now only one race away from the fifth, the Liston Stakes and Harry Planet $2.40 and $1.15, three relentless $2.25, Alpine Flyer $1.15, 6.37, Quinella and Trifecta will soon have. And in the next event here at Sandown, there's only about three or four of them that will be brought up to the gates. A very heavy shower, it's still raining out here. The track is rated as dead, but if uh, that sort of persistent rain keeps up, 
uh, it can only make the track worse. But in Sydney, they've got the opposite happening because the track has gone from dead to good. So anyone having a bet in Sydney, the track there is now good. Des Spain, uh, a good field of mares in this race, uh, and there's plenty of chances. Yes, plenty of chances, and it's about uh, uh, two chances there. Equal favourites, Reva Gleam and uh, Midland Maid, and there's only one to go in now, and that is Lady Sawina. But uh, a very interesting race, and I thought a horse called uh, Lady Violet had a good chance at the... Uh, it's showing on the tote about uh, five dollars for your five bob. It's not a bad return because Terry Clifton mentioned before that she beat Midnight Fever and she did it well too. I think it was this day last year, so she obviously peaks about this time. Sure. And uh, the key to her, I think, is to have a low weight. Now, That's Lady Sawino's right. in. Yep, all set. All set to go here, 1,200 metres, dual choice handicap. There's the light. Racing. Sister Shirley was a bit slow to begin, and Papal Princess immediately out the back. Gay Bell and Midland Maid were all slow to begin. Reva Gleam straight to the front from Exploding Wonder. Taffeta Bow third, then lots of zip wide, followed by Ayalani Bay and Voltage. Entertain got up on the inside, Impazera wide, then Midland Maid threading her way through the field. They were followed by Lady Violet, a bit worse than midfield. My Abbey got a slight prat there, and they were followed by Sister Shirley spending a couple of lengths away, Lady Sawino and Papal Princess and Gay Bell the last two, about 25 lengths between first from last and they're going quickly. At the 6.50, Reva Gleam just in front of Exploding Wonder. A length and a half to Lots of Zip, followed by Taffeta Bow. Two lengths away, Impazera wide, but running on well. Then came Entertain, Ailani Bay, Lady Violet very deep, and then Voltage and Midland made a break to Sister Shirley spending, and then Entertain. At the 400, Reva Gleam in front, being cuddled by Wilson, led a length to Exploding Wonder under a lot of pressure. Then Lots of Zip, Lady Violet running on fairly well, followed by Ailani Bay, but Reva Gleam skipped away. Inside the 200, Reva Gleam about three lengths in front, Taffeta Bow got up on the inside then Impazera followed by Voltage River Gleam about two lengths in front of Impazera Taffeta Bow, Reva Gleam is hanging on and first up, River Gleam's going to get home, River Gleam first tight second, maybe Taffeta Bow a nose to Voltage which snuck right up on the inside they were followed by Lady Violet Ayalani Bay, Midland Mate Entertain they got too far back and then spending Lady Sawino, further back lots of zip Impazera knocked up, then Sister Shirley exploding wonder Gay Bell well back with spending and Papal Princess and My Abbey were the last two to finish. Well, a bit of a specialist, uh, Reva Gleam, particularly at the distance. She doesn't mind 1,200 metres and uh, she was able to uh, just go up and down on the one spot at the finish, but it was a, a very heady ride by uh, uh, Nifty Neville Wilson. They were going along pretty fast in front, it and Exploding Wonder, and uh, you'd expect them to compound, but... Uh, one did, Exploding Wonder compounded and Reva Gleam went away then to win the, or to set up a nice margin but was getting, uh, putting in the short ones at the finish and uh, both, uh, or Voltage has gone very quickly home on the rail, it might have just, well, Voltage did get second as it says on the indicator board in the centre and uh, Taffeta Bow was third. So it was a, a pretty heady ride, a good win, and she's a bit of a specialist and doesn't mind uh, a rain-affected track, which a few showers we've had today is certainly bringing it back up to the slow condition. Well, on the replay, Des Reva Gleam was always about two lengths in front, and as I mentioned before, she'd never been beaten first up. Four of her eight wins had been on rain-affected tracks, and it's catch me if you can. Yes, uh, putting in the short ones now and up on the fence voltage, a very good uh, first-up performance there, Taffeta Bow. Impasera looked as though she was going to take a hand and it was a good run by uh, this particular horse coming back there, the grey, Lady Violet. She was not that well away and uh, raced a bit wide and was wide on the turn. So there's a couple of fair runs in the race, but uh, you couldn't take anything away from the consistent uh, Reva Gleam and Nifty Nev. I think he's got a very good strike rate when he comes to town. Certainly has. He's, I think he's a great rider on a horse that leads. Oh, he's a very good rider, full stop. He doesn't leave the farm and record unless he thinks he's got some, you know, somebody's got to milk the cows tonight. Well, he's got to pay them and he's got to get the money here today. Well, he's got his percentage out of the win of Reva Gleam and that was her uh, ninth win from 16 starts and on the tote, $2.65 and 95 cents. She was quoted at double figure odds this morning, which was quite incredible. Voltage second, $5.90. Good first up run, had a bit of luck. 18 Taffeta Bow, third a dollar and 70 cents. The extra double to pay $7.95 on Memphis Blues and Reva Gleam. A very happy Neville Wilson, a smile from ear to ear. A couple of cheers too as the rain comes down again. Terry Clifton is at one King Phoenix, $5.25. Look at Bonhomie, $27.65. I, I know Keith Hillier came on before and it is very true that the horse just can't handle anything 
um, Stingy in the ground, everything wet and 27.65 Bonami. Groucho $2.10, Cossack Warrior $3.90, My Steely Dan $3.75, Our Palace at $27, Reputed $38, Aberritti $23, Northern Copy number nine, eleven dollars and eighty-five cents. Kingston Lane, eight dollars ninety. Congressman, ten dollars eighty-five. Twelve Latin Rule, thirty-two oh five. Number thirteen is Captain Police, fourteen seventy-five. High Regard number fourteen at four dollars forty and one forty-five. Celtic Spirit, thirty-two dollars ninety-five. Sixteen Havelock's Pride, fourteen sixty. Seventeen Young Carbinier, twelve dollars forty. It's one five of its only six starts in Queensland. And eighteen Society Bay, four dollars twenty-five and a dollar fifty-five. So it's a first time in a little while we haven't had a short price favourite in the Wait for Age race. It's going to be a ripper. It's the JJ Liston Stakes, race number five at Sandown Standard Wait for Age, and it's due at ten minutes to three. Gleam 275 and a dollar even for the place. Eight voltage, five dollars thirty-five, and number eighteen taffeta bow a dollar seventy-five. Quinella forty-five fifteen. The trifecta one thousand three hundred and forty dollars ninety-five. The race to race double ninety-nine fifty-five. Not to get confused with the extra double, which was on races two and four. Numbers one and five seven dollars ninety-five. Memphis Blues and Reva Gleam. Race five is the JJ Liston Stakes, and I'm very keen on High Regard number 14 here. He, uh, he's beaten Sky Chase in Sydney before. He's never been beaten fourth up from a spell. Now, on most occasions, it doesn't mean that much, uh, fourth up from a spell, but this particular horse seems to peak at about that run back. And currently on the tote, he's at odds of uh, eight to one. Cossack Warrior will no doubt go well first up, especially with the sting out of the ground. And King Phoenix is a horse you can just never leave out. But Crouch shows the chance, and uh, so too is the bottom weight society by Terry Clifton's downstairs and the run ready to go light flashing for the first of the four trailer they're off and running patchy start mcginty's boy didn't show any speed neither to draw an ace or indicative or fantastic toy the stable mate on settling down far foot one of the leaders richmond boys up right on the pace today up vying for the lead and getting a nice positive malura back on the inside with those around the outside jungle tails and in the thick of things there was game reason and there's another one going into it quickly draw an ace from back on the field going up to attack the leaders after a moderate start game reason now drifts back center field they were followed further back in the field behind those then by c's command who's getting a fair way back out of ground with fantastic two on its inside indicative the stable mates actually last and a couple ahead of it include top joke and mcginty's boy indicative back at the tail down the side they race and here draw an ace draws away by a length or so to in second posse five foot richmond boys being given the run of the race they were followed further back by Murulura. then came jungle tails and making some headway around them game reason and even deeper on the track as sees command as they come to the turn to swing jungle tails shifting away from the inside game reasons now put three or four deep and even deeper sees command then fantastic toy as they turn for home again his boy given ground to the outside indicative and top joke but the leader is still five foot running down with 250 to go it got two in front of richmond boy murulura game reason coming late down the outside it might be too late though because five foot's got a handsome break he's about three or four in front of game reason who'll get to second from richmond boy and then sees command but five foot's untroubled goes home and wins it impressively game reason second sees command third richmond boy fourth they were followed by jungle tiles mcginty's boy a much much nice run oh, put him down on the black Book. Further back on the field behind those then came Fantastic Toy with this mirror Lura. Out wider then came Indicative and then Top Joke and to the outside pulling up quickly draw an ace. 174 past the post Cheltenham. The winner five foot 165 and 65 cents. It started the favourite on the tote. Game reason second number seven 85 cents and four C's command third about 95 cents. So it's 174 past the post. Race number four at Cheltenham. The fifth event there. But he's six thousand dollars in the 1930s imagine that relatively and he won two melbourne cups including one with nine stone ten on a quagmire track in 1934. he was a horse with a big heart and here's a bloke with a big heart and a sore neck kenny calendar thanks john and uh, i think i've got a good tip here i like the favorite rule pardon but if you've backed him on the tape you should be at the track because bookies bet plenty of seven to two here at rose hill he's still three to one and the tape where well, you're going to be lucky to get two to one as long as we collect though eh Let's look at these prices. General Warning is at 8 to 1. He's from Queensland. Marimula Baby right in the finish if he can overcome his wide alley is at 5 to 1. Swiftly Carson at 12s. 30 Master Painter. 100 Irish Impulse. 30 to 1 run straight run. Royal Pardon at 2 to 1. 25 Dragon Breeze. 50 Quartet. 
eight to one Great Hunter, 25 just a Cowboy. Pradna for a big tip on course is at eight to one. 12 to one Acapulco, a good chance and a stable mate of the favourite. He's by Sir Tristram. 200 Natural Wood, 50 Jenica. Sheer Crystal was scratched and dissertation at 200 to one. The favourite, yep, he's showing $1.45 at the moment, almost two to one. Here's Johnny. Good, Ken. Three horses to move up for the Peter Pan Stakes, a race which has been run by or won by such notables as Kingston Town, Best Western, Sir Dapper, Handy Proverb. So uh, it's a good horse's race. Now, Dragon Breeze with Ken Russell on board is about to move in. By G. Ken Russell's a cosmopolitan jockey. He flies out of Sydney tonight to ride at a two-day meeting at Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. They're racing tomorrow, I think, a Sunday meeting with the Kalgoorlie Cup on Wednesday next. Um, Ken Russell hates to uh, decline invitations from these faraway race clubs. He loves a trip away and tries to oblige whenever he can. And of course, with no Metropolitan racing on Wednesday this week, uh, Ken has been able to, to get away for a few days to ride in the Golden West. Uh, Wednesday's meeting, of course, is at Wyong with the running of the Wyong Cup. And it'll be a great program uh, in place of the, the normal Sydney Metropolitan meeting. Now, run straight run is the last one to move up into the gates, and they're about set for a start in the principal one of the day, the Peter Pan Stakes. Now, Billy Dale coming over to release the field. They face well. General Warning is the inside runner. Master Painter, a well-performed New Zealander. General Warning is very fidgety in the number one gate. Royal Pardon stands well. So does Acapulco. Marimbula Bay faces up squarely with Pradnapper and Swiftly Carson. Jump at any second. Starters ready. Off in the Peter Pan. General Warning began very awkwardly. He's a clear last out of the barrier. Swiftly Carson easily won the start and bounced out in front of Great Hunter, followed by Acapulco. Natural Wood is well away and so is Dissertation and right up there with them Pratt Napper, but he's trapped out very deep from a wide gate. Irish Impulse getting into a prominent spot and just behind those Royal Pardon, followed by Marimbula Bay. General Warning, Master Painter, just a cowboy. And then Dragon Breeze and getting well back. Run straight run, followed by Jenica and last is Quartet. Inside the 1,000 metres mark, Natural Wood a half length on Swiftly Carson, Pradnap a third, still three deep. A length away, Irish Impulse on the inside of Acapulco. In that bunch is Great Hunter for at the 800 mark and out very deep, Marimbula Bay, followed by Royal Pardon, General Warning, Dissertation out wide, Just a Cowboy. At the head of the others, Master Painter, followed by Dragon Breeze, Run Straight Run and then Jenica and Quartet as last as the Peter Pan field nears the turn. About 4.50 out and Swiftly Carson cutting loose on the outside raced up to go to the lead from Irish Impulse in third place Acapulco and then General Warning followed by Great Hunter racing erratically and Marimbula Bay is looming up with a big run and further out just a cowboy at the 200 swiftly Carson the leader from Marimbula Bay Royal Pardon between horses running on fairly well and then General Warning but swiftly Carson well clear with 100 left to go over Marimbula Bay Royal Pardon now run straight run and Jenica is flying down the outside swiftly Carson is walking Jenica and run straight run picking him up but could couldn't make it and swiftly Carson has just lasted to win from either Jenica or run straight run with Marimbula Bay fourth and then Acapulco Royal Pardon followed by General Warning Dissertation Just a Cowboy Dragon Breeze Natural Wood Great Hunter Wellback Master Painter Irish Impulse and Quartet and Pratt Napper after a hard run is one of the last to finish in the Peter Pan of 88. Swiftly Carson stopping in the last 50 metres but looks to have just been able to hold out the fast finishing brigade Jenica and run straight run to narrowly win the Peter Pan Stakes. Bart Cummings had three runners in the race and it looks as though Bart's done it again. Swiftly Carson, $6 and $2.10. Now, Jenica, number 15. Gee, that was a surprise packet. $5 on the place. Run straight run is the other one in the photo for second. Ken, he'd pay $3.45. Yes, John, swiftly Carson in front. Johnny Marshall could have ridden him, but stuck with Royal Pardon. Uh, he's starting to tire here, but he had enough in hand. Jenica, the whitest horse out in Maya Card's colours. He's steaming home with Run Straight Run, but swiftly Carson, I think, has just beaten Jenica, and you'll find that uh, Run Straight Run was in third place. Waiting uh, for the photo, but uh, that's the way I saw them. And in race six, uh, number three is now official, Swiftly Carson, incidentally. And in the next race, that's the number I like. Number three, Flaming Road. John, the second and third horses sure rattled home. Oh, yes, Ken. Very, very big efforts by the pair of them. 
Uh, Jenica has been very sparingly raced. Today was his third start only. He won a maiden at Kembla at his most recent start, and that was only August 16. Uh, that was how long ago? About 11 days ago. So he's, uh, he's jumped out of the ground. Jenica, well-named. He's by Crested Wave. And the other one, Run Straight Run, trained by Fred Wilson at Hawkesbury, hasn't raced since June when he had an unsuccessful trip to Brisbane. Both huge runs, but Swiftly Carson continues a freakish trot being enjoyed at the moment by Bart Cummings. Johnny Marshall was the one loser there. He had the pick of the three rides and pulled the wrong rein. OK, next on Wide World of Sports, more of the United States gymnasts competing for a trip to Seoul. And they're just about set to go for the list, and there's the light. Wait for age, and they're off and racing. Kingston Lane a bit slow to begin, and also slow out was Captain Police. Society Bay, one of the best out with My Steely Dan, and Bonamy up close early. Groucho gets up on the inside, followed by Aberritti, King Phoenix, and getting up on the fence, High Regard, about a line of seven early. Then Young Cabinier, followed by Kingston Lane. Back behind those was Havelock's Pride, getting up on the inside of Reputed, and then Congressman, Latin Rule, Celtic Spirit, Cossack Warrior, well back. Third last, our Palliser, dropping back Captain Police, and last of all, Northern Copy. About 15 lengths between first from last, and Aberritti went to the front, a half length to High Regard. Society Bay's out three deep, a length and a half to My Steely down, and Groucho lost his position as they run down the hill. About two and a half lengths away, Bonamy out wider on the track from King Phoenix and then came Havelock's Pride. A couple of lengths away, Congressman followed by Kingston Lane. Well back, Captain Police, Cossack Warrior still fifth last. And a couple behind him as they run up towards the turn is Young Carbinier with our Palliser and Latin Rule. Coming around the turn, about 500 metres left to go. Aberritti on the inside of Society Bay just led a length away. High regard, My Steely Dan comes into it quickly. They were followed by reputed Bonamy, Cossack Warrior, Captain Police running on well with Congressman. Down towards the the 250 metre point, My Steely Dan went to the front from Society Bay then Bonamy followed by High Regard getting out, My Steely Dan burst to the front in the list and he's kicked away, he's got a winning break the Kiwi, My Steely Dan three in front running on hard was Havelock Spider then came Bonamy but My Steely Dan wins the list and My Steely Dan and Brent Thompson by three lengths, second Havelock Spider, it's a tidy for third between Bonamy and High Regard, they were followed by Celtic Spirit, Captain Police Congressman Society Bay, then Kingston Lane and they were followed by Reputed at our Palliser. Groucho, very disappointing, didn't seem to handle the hill. Then Aberritti, Young Carbinier, Northern Copy, Cossack Warrior, never got warm. Latin rule second last, and King Phoenix has been just as disappointing. He's pulled up the last one to finish in the field of 18 in the JJ Liston Stakes. Well, I'm sure that the rain affected track had something to do with the, uh, not the unexpected uh, win of uh, St My Steely Dan, because he is a slow tracker. He loves, uh, loves the slow going. And uh, he was brilliantly ridden by Br uh, Brent Thompson. He was out first, uh, had to drive him home with the whip in the left hand, but the horse was much too good. And another horse that performs well here, loves sand down as Havelock's pride. He's come along and got uh, second place money as a photo for third. But uh, once again, I think if you were able to sift it out, that you, if you would get the wet or the slow tracker and the horse that runs well on the track, well, you'd have had the Quinella there. And uh, anyway, uh, what can you say, Bonomi, gee whiz, had nearly won the race and yet to all intents and purposes he's no good at all in rain affected going. Uh, the time was 127.8 which is definitely a fair way, you know, it's getting into the slow conditions now. You've only got to look at the surrounds of the track to see how wet it is. Uh, but a good run by Bonhomi when you don't expect him to do that good. High regard was always up there and as I say Society Bo loves the wet track and she was always in the van. But a very good win. I think Brent's gloves are still pretty white. He went out with white gloves and I think they're still pretty